Greetings, I'm Dr. Kim Yongjin. In the past lecture, I talked about the various know-hows for successful GBR. In real life, as you do GBR, there can be many complications. There can be many different complications in doing GBR, but most frequently, membrane exposure occurs. I'm going to talk about how we can overcome membrane exposure, which is one of the most common GBR complication. First of all, membrane used in GBR can be largely divided into two. First is resorbable collagen membrane and second is non-resorbable PTFE membrane. First, when resorbable collagen membrane is exposed, as shown in the histological slide, the collagen membrane becomes denaturated and disappears. Superior epithelialization can be done very nicely, however, bone generation below can be unfavorable. A lot of companies that make collagen membranes say that it's okay even if the membrane is exposed. Collagen membrane itself is used for epithelialization, and it is often used as a dressing material for a wound. The purpose of collagen membrane when used for GBR is not for epithelialization, but is to encourage bone regeneration. And it also prevents gingival epithelial tissue migration. However, if collagen membrane is exposed because of the bacteria in the oral cavity, it denaturates and necrosis occurs. Therefore, bone regeneration below becomes unfavorable. As a way to overcome this issue, I have mentioned transmucosal GBR method. When you have to do GBR at the same time as immediate implant placement, the soft tissue can frequently be lacking. In order to overcome this issue, you can use collagen membrane fixated using healing abutment and uh, you can cover bone graft using this. I have mentioned the transmucosal GBR or submerged GBR technique, and I believe you can overcome various issues using this method. The most concerning is when a PTFE membrane is exposed. The non resorbable PTFE membrane, if it is exposed, what should we do? If it is exposed, does that mean failure of GBR? Not necessarily. One of the reasons why we fear using PTFA membrane is because we think it's a failure if it is exposed. If you don't know how to manage situations where it's exposed, then it can become very confounding. So I'm going to talk about how to address issues when PTFA membrane is exposed. Personally, I follow the method introduced by Bavradi and Simeon in 2007 in how to address an exposed PTFE membrane. First, depending on the size of the exposure of PTFE membrane, it can be divided into class 1 and class 2. If it is below 3 mm, it is class 1. If it is over that, it is class 2. In the case of small exposure below 3 mm, you can just maintain it. First, just leave it. In the early stages after surgery, before stitch out or right after stitch out, if the amount of exposure is less than 3 millimeters, I think it is better to recommend it. Amongst PTFE membrane, there are PTFE membrane with textured surface. This is quite rough. In this case, on the rough surface, plaque can accumulate. The plaque can cause infection in the exposed margin of PTFE membrane and below gingiva. Therefore, you need to emphasize oral hygiene in the exposed area. You can have the patient use a gargle with chlorohexidine, or you can use gel with chlorohexidine and have the patient use Q-tip to apply it three times a day.
I prefer uh, having the patient use the 1.0% chlorohexidine gel and apply it three times a day in the exposed area. In the case of gargle solution, the concentration of chlorohexidine is mere 0.12%. There are many chlorohexidine gels with 1% concentration available in the market. You can have the patient use them and apply it three times a day. Then it will be well maintained. So how long should it be maintained? In the case of small exposure below 3 mm, how long should it be maintained or when should it be removed? When you compare the different literatures, after 4 or 6 weeks it should be removed. Then why wait 4 or 6 weeks specifically? It takes 4 to 6 weeks for particle type bone graft to stabilize. After 4 to 6 weeks, Osteoblast penetrates into the bone graft and osteoids which fuel bone regeneration are created. Therefore, after this period, barrier membrane is no longer needed. The primary purpose of barrier membrane is to prevent the penetration of soft tissue cells into the bone graft. If it can be prevented for four to six weeks. Bone cells from surrounding bone will migrate into the bone graft and bone regeneration will occur. If you emphasize the importance of oral hygiene to the patient, you'll be able to maintain the exposed membrane for four to six weeks. Then how can you remove it? Should you open flap extensively? No, that's not necessary. In the case of PTFE membrane, it is not integrated with the soft tissue. You can make a minimal incision line in the exposed area and use needle holder or mosquito to pull out the PTFE membrane. You do not need to make extensive incision line. If you make extensive incision line, the blood supply will become unfavorable below and it will lead to significant bone loss. Therefore, it is ideal to remove membrane in a minimally invasive way. Let me show you a clinical case. In the upper number 14, 15, 16, 17, four implants were placed in number 15 and 16. GBR was done. PTFE membrane was used for GBR. This is pre-op image. In the occlusal view of the upper, I'm going to skip the surgical process. This is a post-op image. In number 16, the defect was significant and primary stability was not good. And that's why I submerged it. In number 16 and 15, buccally, I used a PTFE membrane to do GBR. This is post-op three weeks. At second week, at stitch up, there were signs of perforation, and at third week, you can see that there is perforation. Maybe this was because immediate implant placement after extraction. The size of perforation or PTFE membrane exposure was less than 3 millimeters, and as mentioned, I had the patient use chlorohexidine gel of 1% concentration for application in the said area. You give a tube to the patient. As you all know, if you use Clorox and Gargle for over six weeks, the normal oral bacteria with an oral cavity can become eliminated and other infection due to fungal bacteria can occur. It is not recommended to use chlorohexidine solution for a long period. I recommend usage of chlorohexidine gel that can be used in select area. In the researches that I've mentioned earlier, it is recommended to use four to six weeks. I am more conservative. I maintain it for six to eight weeks. Even after eight weeks, you can see no epithelialization occurs over the exposed area, unlike the collagen membrane. 
상처하는 되지는 않는데요. Around surrounding gingiva, there's no sign of inflammation or infection. At eighth week, I did not make this extensive incision and use mosquito to pull off the exposed PTFE membrane. It comes out easily. I removed cover screw and connected healing abutment. In the exposed area, does it need suture? No. I just left it. I remove the membrane and at second week you can see nice epithelialization post up 5 months, post up 20 week. This is the image before taking final impression around the exposed area, nice epithelialization has occurred and no soft tissue depression or defect can be observed. Let's look sequentially. This is at third week when exposure was observed, chlorhexidine gel was applied and it was maintained up to the eighth week. This is post of 20th week. You this is how soft the tissue has healed and now let's look at the healing pattern of the bone. This is how bone regeneration occurred. As you can see in number 15, in the buccal area there was a slight defect and GBR was done. This is eight weeks after surgery. Even though PTFE membrane was exposed, you can see bone graft has been maintained nicely. The PTFE membrane was removed in the eighth week, and in the twentieth week, you can see the bone graft in the buccal side is maintained nicely. This is number six. Lateral approach sinus bone graft was done simultaneously. In crystal area, GBR was done and you can see bone graft is well maintained. This is six months after surgery and the final prosthesis was delivered. Panoramic image and clinical image. In number five and six, there are no buccal defects. Let's look at another case. This is a 72-year-old female patient, and in lower left, two implants were placed. The old bridge was cut and removed. If you look at the pre-op CT image, the patient had been edentulous for a long time, and it was pontic base. In other words, in number 6 and 7, where implants needed to be placed, there's a severe horizontal defect. I opened the flap. As you can see, there is a very severe horizontal bone defect. I did drilling and placed two implants. I made a mistake. In the lecture where I talked about GBR using PTFE membrane, when you use PTFE membrane, vertical incision line needs to be two millimeters away from the proximal margin. You need to gain safety margin. When you make vertical incision, if the tooth is positioned in the mesial side, you need to make a mesial line angle. If it is positioned in the distal side, you need to make distal line angle. By doing this, you can get safety margin between the proximal margin of the membrane and the vertical incision. I made a mistake here. The natural tooth was positioned mesially. However, I gave vertical incision with distal buccal line angle. I should have made incision like this. I should have made a vertical incision with mesial buccal line angle because it was mesially positioned the tooth, but I didn't do that. What should you do in this case? In order to gain proper safety margin, at times you can make vertical incision with a distal buccal line angle in the adjacent mesial tooth, including the papilla. Yet I made a distal buccal line angle on the mesially positioned tooth. I made cortical perforation and placed the implant. I used a bone tack to fixate the PTFE membrane apically. The vertical incision on the mesial side was not very good. I used the sandwich technique using allograft and xenograft to do GBR. This is right before suture. As you can see, between vertical incision and 
proximal margin of membrane, there needs to be two millimeters in between to prevent any tearing of the margin. As for collagen membrane, because it can be adapted very nicely, even if it is close, it's not really problematic. Yet the PTFE membrane is extremely rigid and the margin can open easily, even if it is not exposed. If it is too close, the soft tissue sealing will not be perfect and there can be different issues such as infection. I tried to gain primary closure as much as possible. This is post-op panoramic image, MPA. Implant position and direction are good. If you look at the CT right after surgery, the membrane is, is contouring the buccal wall nicely. And you can see bone graft below. At fourth week after surgery, Two weeks after surgery at Stitcha, there was not major issue. However, at fourth week, you can see a little bit of gingival swelling along the vertical incision area. If you press upon it, there's fluctuation. In other words, there's abscess. I think there may have been internal infection. The cause, I assume, is the vertical incision line made on the mesial side and through there, bacterial infection or improper sealing of mucosa occurred. As mentioned, the membrane is removed four to six weeks after exposure, and that is the guide. If it is after four weeks and if you see infection, I believe it is right to remove it. In the previous case, because there was no infection, I waited for six to eight weeks, and if there is infection and if it is over four weeks, I believe the right thing to do is to remove it. If you leave it untouched, there will be even more bone graft resorption. I decided to open minimal flap when I remove it. The same as what I've mentioned earlier, I skipped a vertical incision and I made incision on the crestal side and removed the PTFE membrane. It was not enough to connect the healing abutment and just did primary closure. I waited up to 20 weeks after surgery. I removed the membrane early. If you remove all the inflammation, you can see that gingival healing is achieved nicely. This, you can see the difference between before and after removal. Five months after surgery, this is before secondary surgery. If you look at the CT, bone graft materials are well maintained. The membrane was removed in the appropriate timing and afterwards appropriate treatment was provided. The bone graft loss was minimized. This is at 20th week. Secondary surgery was done. Although membrane was removed in four weeks, you can see that bone regeneration is very favorable. As mentioned, if four weeks pass after surgery, there is a stabilization within bone graft material. This is before and after. This is at 20th weeks. This is a comparison. Healing abutment was connected and secondary surgery was completed and after two months, the final prosthesis was fabricated and delivered. This is PA after final prosthesis delivery. There was no vertical bone loss. Marginal bone level is well maintained. This is CT follow-up after final prosthesis delivery. You can see that the augmented buccal bone is well maintained. This is the same with number six, number seven. Up until now, I've talked about the minor exposure, and I also mentioned how inflammation may also be possible even though the exposure is barely visible. Now I'm going to talk about how to address cases where PTFE membrane has been exposed by over three millimeters. If membrane is extensively exposed, the prognosis differ depending on the timing. If exposure occurred early on after surgery, and if the exposure is over 3 millimeters before 1 or 2 months, we call this early exposure, and in this case, most of the time, the GBR fails.
Before osteoid or other likewise material are formed within bone graft material, other bone cells may penetrate into it and this can lead to bacterial infection. In this case, ossification of bone graft will not occur, or granulation tissue can be formed. However, in the case of delayed exposure, if it is after two months, in other words, from fourth week to eighth week, then in most cases, it will not be clinically problematic. When we use PTFE membrane below that, connective tissue layer called pseudoperiosteum is formed. This is a thick and dense connective tissue layer and is in between the PTFE membrane and newly formed bone. It is approximately one millimeter in thickness. I don't know why it is formed and despite various researches, no one has quite figured it out yet. The clinical meaning of pseudoperiosteum is that even if there is no membrane, it serves as protective barrier. Once ossification occurs within the bone graft, the pseudoperiosteum is formed to protect it from the outside. As mentioned earlier, below the PTFE membrane, thick and dense soft tissue layer is formed, and this is pseudoperiosteum. Once this is formed, even if membrane is exposed extensively, once it is removed, the pseudoperiosteum serves as protective barrier, and it does not affect the bone regeneration below. After eight weeks, PTFE membrane can be exposed. So when you use PTFE membrane, in order to get a pension-free primary closure, you make periosteal releasing incision on the buccal flap and you sever the continuity of periosteum. Because the blood supply from periosteum is blocked, the thickness of gingiva becomes thinner. But the PTFE membrane has a strong elasticity and rigidity and it pushes through the buccal flap which has become weaker and thinner. In this case, I used PTFE membrane to do GBR and after three months since surgery, extensive exposure occurred. The size of exposure was over three millimeters and it was class two. However, it was delayed exposure. So I just pulled the membrane out. Below, you can see that there's a layer of soft tissue that has been formed two weeks and four Four weeks after removal, you can see that it is nicely healed. In the case of delayed exposure, after you remove it, you don't need to do primary closure. To summarize, when PTFE membrane is exposed, you need to look at the size of exposure. If it is below 3 mm, you need to at least maintain it for 4 to 6 weeks. And while it is maintained in order to minimize inflammation or gingival infection, you need to emphasize the need to use chlorohexidine gel and oral hygiene. If the size of exposure is over 3 millimeter, you need to understand that the timing is a determinant factor in bone regeneration. If it occurs early on, before 4 to 8 weeks, there's a higher possibility of failure. If the exposure is over 3 millimeter, you have to remove it. Once exposure of over 3 millimeter is observed, you need to remove it. And if you see granule of bone graft or no epithelialization, you need to consider it failed and remove it. However, if there is delayed exposure at 8 or 10 weeks after surgery, in a lot of cases, it does not have major impact. You can just pull it out. I've talked about complications related to GBR. The most common complication in GBR is membrane exposure. When you use resorbable collagen membrane in order to minimize membrane exposure, you can use transmucosal type of GBR and that is the way to do it. When you use PTFE membrane, as mentioned earlier, you need to follow the guideline that has been laid out. And depending on the size of exposure and the timing, if you provide appropriate treatment, you'll be able to overcome the complications related to GBR.
In this lecture, I've talked about complication related to GBR. Personally, I believe more so than understanding ways to address the complications, you need to make sure that these complications do not occur in the first place. Rather than knowing how to overcome complications in GBR, I believe you need to prevent it from occurring in the first place. To be able to do this, your basic technique is very important. If you understand and master the basic techniques regarding suture and fixating membrane and flap management via master course, you'd be able to minimize these complications. Thank you for watching.